Okay, hello everyone. Looks like my camera's a little smudgy. I don't know if that, yeah, there we go, that's a little bit better. Okay, so earlier this year, a few months ago, the Lord had me give an exhortation to fellow teachers to teach more discipleship. And he gave six bullet points as to, you know, what, what exactly is discipleship. And today in this video, we are going to address the last topic, the sixth topic, which is submission, submitting, Christian submission. So let's just open in prayer. Father God, Yahweh, Holy Spirit, Yeshua, the Christ of Nazareth, I just thank you, Lord, for this privilege to uh, to teach, to feed your sheep, Lord. In the name of Yeshua, the Christ of Nazareth, I plead the blood of Yeshua, the Christ of Nazareth, once again over my entire domain. I ask you, Lord, in the name of Yeshua, the Christ of Nazareth, will you please put a hot coal over my tongue and prevent me from saying anything that's not true and not coming from you. I ask you, Father God, Yahweh, Holy Spirit, Yeshua, the Christ of Nazareth, in the name of Yeshua, the Christ of Nazareth, for your presence, Lord, I ask Yeshua, will you please breathe afresh into me, overflowing your peace that surpasses all comprehension, emotions, and circumstances, and moods, and um, just your Holy Spirit, Lord, afresh, overflowing. I ask, Lord, that it be your words coming out of my mouth instead of my own in this teaching. I invite your presence, I request and invite and welcome um, your words, Lord, just whatever you want to spontaneously say, reveal, um, in the name of Yeshua, the Christ of Nazareth, I invite and request and welcome and release and loose and impart the conviction and the revelation of the Holy Spirit of Yeshua, the Christ of Nazareth. And I just say, Lord, please come and have your way. I ask for all of this in the name of Yeshua, the Christ of Nazareth. Okay, so I've got some notes here that I was just scribbling down as I was discussing this with the Lord as to what he wants me to, uh, to teach. Basically, his curriculum for this topic, okay? So we've got four major bullet points that we're going to cover here. So we're covering discipleship and the aspect of discipleship that is submission, to submit. So the first thing that the Lord wanted me to cover was some definitions, okay? The definition to submit means to accept or yield to a superior authority or will, as in the will of God. Definition of submission, presenting a proposal for judgment. So what the Lord wanted me to explain here is that to submit means, are you even thinking about what his will is? Are you even asking him what his will is? Do you even think about that? Does it even cross your mind? Because as Christians, as a disciple of Christ, of the Messiah, you are supposed to be in unceasing prayer, always asking him what his will is regarding every decision, great and small. And let me remind you that even what you think, what, what you consider to be small decisions may have huge impacts. Okay. Um, submission, presenting a proposal for judgment. So this means that Basically, you're going to submit your will to his will. You're going to approach the throne of grace in your prayer closet all day, every day, in unceasing prayer. Prayer is just communication with the Lord. It's a two-way communication street with the Lord. And you're going to present your will to him and ask him what his will is. And if they don't match up, you're going to submit to his will. Okay? That is the act of submission. It's not that the Lord doesn't want to have you confide in him or tell him what you think or feel or desire or fear or what your rationale is. 
he wants you to talk to him. He wants you to converse with him and be intimate with him. Okay, that, that is the Christian uh, walk, lifestyle, relationship with the Lord. Okay, um, you can go to him and say, well, Lord, in this situation, here's my thoughts, here's my feelings, here's what I'm afraid of, here's what I desire, and here's the best solution that I've come up with. Here's the, the, the best train of uh, thought that I've come up with, the, the, the best uh, course of action that I've come up with. But what do you say, Lord? What is your will? Because he's God. We're not. His ways are higher above our ways. Okay? And then you listen. You listen. You be still. You be quiet. And sometimes you wait. Sometimes he'll tell you immediately on the spot, and sometimes you have to wait. Sometimes he may tell you, do a fast. Fast for a day. Fast for three days. Fast for a week. Whatever. And then he'll make it clear to you, and you'll feel a check in your spirit. You'll feel a, a conviction. And let me just go off on a side tangent real quick regarding conviction. Yes, conviction is, is most widely known for when the Lord is, you know, uh, telling you to stop sinning. Yes, of course, it applies to that. But conviction is also just a strong sense, an impression, a feeling, a knowing that the Lord is saying, go this way and not that way. What I'm hearing right now is, is um, that passage that says that you will hear a voice from behind you telling you this is the way, walk in it. And there's another passage, if not the same passage, that says, you know, don't turn to the right or to the left. Meaning that if you're aligned with him, if you are living in repentance, if you are living in submission, the Lord will be straightening your paths, right? Lean not on your own understanding, but in all your ways, acknowledge him. Acknowledge him. That means Talk to him. Be in unceasing prayer. And the Lord will correct your path. He will straighten your path. So that you're not turning to the right or to the left. So let's just go over that again. The definition of submit is to accept or yield to a superior authority or will. Ultimately, God's will. Submission. Presenting a proposal for judgment. You're going to present your proposal of what you would do in this situation and you're going to ask him to judge you and tell you what his will is and tell you whether or not your will and his will are aligning because if they're not then you should be submitting to him course correcting you okay in your decision making every day all day okay so that's point number one and Again, everyone, I am still living, I'm, I'm in a motel right now, so if there's background noise of people walking outside, just please disregard any background noise. Okay. The second thing that the Lord wanted me to cover is who are you to submit to as a Christian? Ultimately, God, obviously, right? That goes without saying, or it should. But it also applies to his officers, the fivefold ministers, pastors, evangelists, teachers, prophets, apostles. And I asked the Lord if he wanted me to go into breaking down, you know, um, like the, the level of authority within the fivefold offices. And he said no, but there is that one verse, I forget where it is, where I believe it says, apostles, prophets, and teachers take precedence. Um, but yes, you are to submit to the officers of the kingdom. Now, here's the thing. You may not always realize, or you may misjudge, whether or not someone is an officer, whether or not someone is anointed, whether or not someone is appointed, okay? But just because you don't realize it, just because you misjudge, and especially if you're not asking him, that's why you gotta be careful who you are being insolent towards, who you are smear campaigning, who you are slandering, 
who you are rebelling against because if you are rebelling against God's mouthpieces, his officers, he's not going to take kindly to that. Which brings us to point number three that he told me to make. Consequences for not submitting to him and his officers. The first point the Lord wanted me to make was hindered prayers slash requests slash petitions. Now, the two verses that I found quickly that actually say anything about, you know, um, hindered prayers would be 1 Peter 3, 7. And yes, the context of that passage is particularly talking about, you know, husbands honoring their wives. Um, but it is just a principle in general of how we are to uh, submit to one another, love one another. And that is another verse to submit to one another. Um, there's another verse that's coming to mind right now. I, I think it's in Peter. I just put it on the community page this past week about how we are told to fervently love one another with hospitality, okay? The love of many is waxing cold. I, I have firsthand experienced how even amongst the officers there hasn't been hospitality. Another verse is Psalm 66, 18. Um, it says something to the effect of, you know, if you cherish iniquity, um, then the Lord will not hear your prayers, right? So if you are rebellious, if you're not submitting to him, he may not be responding to your prayers, okay? And I was reminded last night from a fellow apostle that I just found on YouTube last night of Acts 5.32, the Holy Spirit is given to those who do what? Who obey him who submit to him. Okay, so if you're not living your life with him as Lord in all areas of your life, you got to question whether or not you really are hearing from the Holy Spirit of Yeshua the Christ of Nazareth. Okay? A lot of people claim that they're hearing from the Lord, and it's clear they're not. And if you would really examine their character, their lives, they're not living with Jesus as Lord. They're not. The second bullet point under consequences is loss of. And now this has three of its own sub bullet points. Loss of, number one, blessings. Okay? Consequences of not submitting to God and his officers is that you could lose out on blessings. And blessings is a pretty wide spectrum of things, okay? I'm just going to leave that at that. Number two, loss of position slash appointment in the kingdom, right? So we all, or we should be familiar enough with scripture regarding David, King David, right? He was anointed, but he was not yet appointed, right? So... You can be ordained in an office. You can be ordained um, for whatever position on this earth, in this earth. You can be ordained to have a specific position, fulfill specific purposes, be appointed to something. Okay? And yes, there is, um, just as with King David, there can be years between when the Lord uh, actually gives you the anointing and actually appoints you, okay, but that's not what we're talking about here. That's not the focus of this uh, video or this point right now. We're just talking about losing your appointment, okay? Um, I've talked earlier this year um, about Ichabod, okay? Ichabod means the glory of the Lord has left, okay, meaning the presence of God has left. There are people who are Ichabodding themselves, basically, because they are not submitting to the Lord's will. And that can be regarding um, how he has led them regarding safe havens. That could be how he has led them regarding kingdom spouses. That can be just how he has led them um, to share the messages and the dreams and the visions that he has given them. If they're not sharing them or if they're not sharing them when they're supposed to or if they're not sharing them 100%, okay? I'm not going to name names, but I met up with a fellow prophetess, seer, um, 
just over a year ago, and she confessed to me that she shared a certain percentage of what the Lord gave her, but kept some details to herself because she wanted to protect her channel and her ministry and whatever. And I was just disgusted and shocked when I heard this, okay? The Lord sees all these things, okay? If the Lord gives you something to share about, yes, what I'm hearing right now from Holy Spirit is about the watchman sounding the trumpet, right? To, to warn the people. When you see the sword coming, if you do not warn the people, then that blood is on your hands, so to speak, right? What that prophetess confessed to me is exactly that. She wasn't blowing the trumpet as she should have. <clears throat> she was withholding certain details because she wanted to protect her ministry, quote unquote, instead of trusting God. That's a lack of faith, okay? So, Consequences, loss of number one, blessings, loss of number two, your position slash your appointment, okay? So yes, the gifts from above are irrevocable. They are without repentance, but even more so um, importantly is offices. You can have an office in the kingdom, okay? God ordains offices long before you're even conceived in your mother's womb. But if you are not submitting to him, if you are not living in obedience and submission to him, you may never be appointed. Or even if you did get to the point of being appointed, he may, what's the word, dethrone you in a sense. He may kind of like, uh, what's that word, demote you as opposed to promote, okay? He may knock you down a peg or two or three or four, um, if you're not doing what you're supposed to be doing in your relationship with him. And he holds officers to a higher level of accountability. Okay, we're told that in scripture. Okay. And point number three, loss of crown slash salvation. Now, I know I'm really going to ruffle some feathers here. But if this is the truth. Okay, we see with Saul, go back in the Old Testament, it says the spirit of the Lord left Saul. Okay, not only did Saul lose out on blessings and his appointment, his position, but he ultimately lost his salvation. Why? Because his God was not the God. He feared man more than he feared God. He was more concerned about getting affirmation and accolades and all of that from his fellow, fellow man instead of God. Okay, this is a very slippery slope. Um... If you are not abiding in Christ, Jesus told us to remain in him. He said, remain in me and I will remain in you. If you do not remain in me, right, okay? If you remain in me, I will remain in you. What does that imply? That if you don't remain in him, he won't remain in you, okay? You can lose your crown. Also, thank you, Holy Spirit, in Revelation. Jesus specifically even flat out warns us, do not let anyone steal your crown. I mean, anyone who? An idol. Any idol. Do not let anyone or anything steal your crown. Do not let fear steal your crown. Do not let yourself have idols so that they take the place of God in your heart and therefore you lose your crown. And the point number four that God told me to make is that submission requires humility, okay? And he told me to give the definition. Humility is a willingness to accept that another way may be truer. That there may be another way, a better way that is more truer, okay? What comes to mind is how Jesus told us, I am the gate. You find this narrow gate, right? So again, you may have your mind made up that, oh, well, this is the best way to go. This is the best solution. This is the best course of action. You may think that your opinion is, you know, fact or whatever. Humility is being willing to be wrong. It's being willing to be corrected. It's being willing th that the Lord has a better way or that maybe he has sent his officer and is showing you through his officer, telling you, informing you, communicating to you through his officer that there is a better, a more truer way. Okay. <clears throat> Lord, is there anything else you want me to say? <clears throat> I 
think that's it. If you have any curious questions, you're always welcome to reach out in the comments or shoot me an email. Um, but this is a major problem in the church, in the quote unquote church, okay? There are many, many, many people that in their own judgment, in their own opinion, in their own perspective, they think they're going to heaven. They believe that they are in the Holy of Holies when they are not. And here's what's amazing to me is even when I have private email conversations with some of these people and I tell them, look, the Lord has flat out told me that you are not in the Holy of Holies. You need to go deeper and higher with him. And I even give them spiritual homework. The impression I get is that they're still not doing that spiritual homework. They're not interested. They're not pressing in anymore. On Judgment Day, the Lord's going to say, I sent you my Apostle April. You were warned. You were specifically, personally, privately warned and exhorted to go deeper and higher with me, and yet you still didn't. Don't let that be you. Don't find yourself burning in the lake of fire for the rest of eternity going, wow, I w really wish that I had listened to the officer that God had brought into my, my life my domain. Jesus was lowly. His officers, his true officers, who are abiding in humility, in Christ, in submission, they are lowly. Just because they're not polished, just because they're not famous, just because whatever, doesn't mean that they aren't true ordained officers in the kingdom. And so, no matter who or what you are encountering, I exhort you in the name of Yeshua, the Christ of Nazareth, you better go to him. Submit that proposal to him. I'll use myself as an example. A lot of people don't like the things I say, the things I teach, the things I preach, etc., etc. But the question is, are you taking whatever I have said or taught or whatever, or anybody else, are you going to the Lord with it? Are you asking him what he says about it? Are you asking him what his will is? Because that's all that matters. Okay? Sorry, my cat is making noise. Um, so I think that's it for this teaching. I bless you all in the name of Yeshua the Christ of Nazareth.